Sir, there is this type of preaching that has been the order of the day in this present generation churches, which entails the preaching of prosperity and materiality. Does this particular type of preaching fall in line with the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, referencing the viral preaching of tithing and sowing of seed. Does this speak the true definition of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ? We live by the word of God. And in the word of God, prosperity is not the gospel. And let me tell you the downside. Okay. That is why many Christians are frustrated. Because they were told if you pay tight, you will never be poor. They pay tight until they are broke, they are trekking, nothing came. They were told if you give to God, you will never okay. be poor. They gave and gave and gave and poverty has not left them. They were told they were given a version, a brand of Christianity that is not a Bible brand. And the message sold out is a transactionally message. What kind of father yes, will God yes. be where you have to bribe him with some little money, sow some seed? You know sacrifice something before god can answer your prayer that sounds like a shrine or idol worship where you have to pay you have to mobilize god as if he's one of the nigerian contractors god doesn't need to be mobilized god doesn't need to be paid in the book of romans chapter 8 verse 32 the bible tells us he that spared not his son but gave him up for us all how shall he not also with him freely give us all things everything that comes from jesus is freely given in the book of matthew chapter 10 when jesus sent the early yeah, apostles yeah. to go and preach he told them as you go preaching freely you have received freely give anything that comes from jesus is free you don't need to sow a seed for god to answer your prayer you don't need to give money for god to meet your needs god doesn't meet your needs because you did something he meets your need because he's a loving father he takes care of us because he loves us simply that I mean, which of us biological fathers will have to be paid before you talk to your child? Your child will give you a little money before you talk to your child. Your child will give you a little money before you solve your child's problem. What kind of father is that? And then Jesus said, if you that are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Okay, okay, fair enough. There is this speculation that is causing misconception among your followers and your rivals about your saying and i put you made mention that the fire that came down from heaven during elijah's time according to second kings chapter 1 verse 10 where elijah commanded fire to consume an officer and his men you said that this fire is not from god please can you throw more light on this well again you know Time will not even allow me here to go into a lot of exigences, but let me quickly take, you know, give you a little explanation to that. When, when I said that the fire that came down, when Elijah brought okay. fire and destroyed those people in 2 Kings chapter 1, I said that fire was not from God. And it's very easy. When you believe that Jesus is God who became a man, that means what Jesus doesn't do, God doesn't do. Yes, Jesus said, yes. I can of myself do nothing. What I see my father do, that is what I do. In Luke chapter 9, the disciples of Jesus saw that Jesus wanted to go through Samaria. And the Samarians refused Jesus passing through their city. And the disciples said, should we command fire to come down and destroy this city like Elijah did? The Bible says Jesus turned and rebuked them and said to them, you know not what manner of spirit you are of. For the son of man is not come to destroy men's lives but to destroy to save yeah, yeah. jesus the same yesterday today and forever if he will not allow them bring down fire in luke chapter 9 verse 51 it means if he was standing where elijah was bringing down fire in second kings chapter 1 he will have rebuked elijah that is why it is not that fire that destroyed people is not from god but there is a second fire and that's where people get confused don't follow social media clips of my teaching look for the full teachings on youtube on my channel the second fire that elijah brought down that consumed the sacrifice consumed the fire in that same second king was a fire of judgment the fire of judgment and if you observe it consumed the sacrifice it consumed the wood it consumed the water that is not human consumption that was judgment against the gods, the idols 
in Egypt. All right, all right. I hope that's so. Okay. You said in one of your videos that God does not kill, and you also say that God is a loving father, that he cannot kill what he created. Flashing back to the days of Noah, the Bible made us to believe that God destroyed mankind because of their atrocities. Is this not an art of killing? I mean, based on what you said, God does not kill. What other words or phrases can qualify or justify your claim that God does not kill? If the days of Noah are referenced based on this conquest, Sodom and Gomorrah Sodom and Gomorrah was a type of the end of the world. Noah preached, I mean, uh, Lot preached, preached the people in Sodom. They refused to receive the gospel. They refused to receive the gospel. At the end of the day, when Lot left and the angels left with Lot, the presence of God was out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Then fire started raining. And Jesus said, like it was then, so shall it be in the day of the Son of Man, which means when the gospel is preached and a man refuses to receive the gospel, at the end of the age, when judgment comes, that person will be judged. And that judgment is the absence of God. Because if God is presented and you reject God, then God will have to leave you. That's what John 3.16 says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth not is condemned already. That condemnation is judgment. That's what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what happened to the world of Noah. And that is what will happen at the end of the age. Those who reject Jesus will be judged. And that judgment is the absence of Jesus. He will not force you. He's not a tyrant. He makes appeal. When you accept, he comes in. When you reject, he stays out. Now, the absence of God is destruction. That's why 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 will say, this is the message that we have had that yeah, God yeah. is light and in him there is no darkness at all God is absolute light God is absolute life God is absolute love somebody somewhere said to me Dr. Damina it's true what you're saying if God is really the one killing then what is Satan's work if God is the one killing then what is Satan doing Jesus told us in John chapter 10 verse 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that you may have life and that you may be abundant. In Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14, the Bible says, Seeing then that the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he likewise himself partook of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. So the killer from Genesis has been the devil. The only part that God plays is to bring life, to bring intervention, to bring healing, and to bring restoration. God is good. He has always been good. He will always be good. And like I said, these are just teasers. They're sound exegesis where we can take scriptures and open them up properly in the light of Christ and see the character of God. God is not bipolar. He's not good and bad. God has only one single character. He's good and his mercies endure it forever.